Are you looking for a cool rocket that no one else has? I'm going to show you in a series of videos how to build this rocket called the Texas Twister. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. This is the Texas Twister rocket kit. Um, this is part number 05014. The 1-4 means it's the 14th kit that Apogee released once I took over the company. Um, that was, uh, I took over the company around 1994, but it wasn't until almost 2001 where this kit was released. Um, it was designed first. Um, I did a whole series of rockets that I wanted to produce, but I didn't get around to releasing it until late, much later in the history of the company. So that's kind of a background of it. Um, the reason I like this rocket, um, because it has a sliding piston arrangement, um, which means that the engine tube moves back and forth, and it holds down these flaps on the bottom of the fins. Um, there's little rubber bands that go across these hooks here. So when the engine slides backwards, these will kick up, and basically it, it allows the rocket to cant so then it starts spinning as it comes down, and it's really cool to see. Uh, the nice thing about these rockets, they're very easy to prep, and um, it doesn't require a lot of space to launch them because they don't drift very far, because they kind of come down at a moderate speed. It's still safe because it's a lightweight rocket, but it is really cool to see. It spins really fast, and that's where it's got its name. Texas tornado. Uh, when I designed this, there was a lot of tornadoes happening in Texas, so I said, well, let's call it a Texas tornado. People will understand that. Um, when you get the kit, and it will look like this, and I'm going to build this for you, and we're going to do it in several sta stages. Um, the first thing to do is to get all the parts out, but I want you to be, um, to look for a very specific part. Um, and that's this one right here, and it's very clear. Um, it's called a nylon hinge mesh. Um, sometimes it's inside the instructions, so when it's laying on the instructions, it can be hard to see. And a lot of people, they'll start building the rocket, and then they get to the step where they need to use the hinge tape, and they can't find it because it's so easy to lose because it blends into its surroundings. So look for that piece first and put it aside where you can find it. All right. Uh, the instructions are pretty good. Uh, we're going to follow along. And today we're going to do the tubes. So the first step is to take the engine mount tube, and that's this one right here, and to mark it in two spots. And the first one is 1 and 5 eighths inches, which will be right here and another one at 3 eighths of an inch, which is right there. All right. There's also um, a step here to glue in the engine block. Here it is. Sometimes they get nested in one another and they're hard to find. But that's where that is. And that's going to be glued 1 eighth inch. So when it's uh, glued in, it's going to be recessed about 1 eighth inch inside the tube. So I got some wood glue here. Actually, you know, I think it's supposed to go in a lot deeper than that. So I am going to glue it in deeper because when this kit was originally designed, it was designed for micro motors. We used to produce a 10.5 millimeter diameter motor and a B motor, and it was three and a half inches long. We no longer produce that motor. Um, so when you put this in, this is the engine block, and it needs to go in so that the engine sticks out about a half of an inch. So it's actually going to get glued in about that deep inside the motor tube from the end with the 3 8 inch mark. So I need to smear glue inside of there. I didn't bring a doll, so I'm just going to use the back of my hobby knife. I'm changing things on the fly here. Sorry about that if you're following along the instructions. 
it's okay if you do it the other way. Um, it's just the motor will not touch the engine block, but it will still prevent the motor from flying through, which is fine. So once I have glue inside, I'm going to use the rocket engine itself to push it into the right length, and I want the engine to hang out about a half of an inch, which is like right there. And then I'll remove that, and so now my engine uh, block is glued in. Okay, and then we're going to take these two of the blue rings, and I have to put it over the edge, and sometimes there's a little burr. It's where they cut the uh, um, ring. The, the knife just kind of smushes that inside edge and it leaves a little burr. But if you smooth it out with your finger, you can slide this in. So that's one, and I need two of them on there. Okay, so now it's going to go on the opposite end as the 3 8 inch mark. So this one's going to get glued right there, and this one's going to get glued right at the end. So, just going to take some wood glue, put some around there, put some around there, and walk that up in there. And then push this one down in there and have your paper towels ready to wipe off any excess glue. Like that. All right. All right, now there's another blue centering ring. And this gets glued into the short body tube like that. And it gets glued in flush, so just put some glue at the front end. And you can smear it around. And then slide it in and just push it down so it's nice and flush just like that all right so oops, it kind of slid on me all right so that's the uh gluing up to the tubes and in our next video we're going to start the assembly of the balsa fins so until then, um, there's some videos over here on the side that you can watch. Um, we'll try to link forward to the next video, uh, but it's going to be delayed about two weeks, so uh, be prepared for that. Uh, my name is Tim Van Milligan, and this is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.